Hey folks, it's Ray at DCMamRecord.com here, and today we have a full review of the new Polar Verity Sense Optical Heart Rate Band. Now this is not Polar's first optical heart rate band, in fact it's technically the third version of it. There was a Polar OH1 and then the Polar OH1 Plus, which just simply added a swim clip, and now we have the Polar Verity Sense. And while it may look very, very similar uh, once you look at the pod itself, there's actually a ton of differences between the two of them. So let's just kind of run through those differences, we'll run through some of the basic usage, and we'll look at accurate after that. You can use a little timeline thingy there on the bottom of uh, the video and YouTube chapters to figure out which section might be most applicable to you. Now before all that, a super quick unboxing. This is the box. Inside the box you will go ahead and you'll find yourself the strap, the sensor that's attached to the strap, the swim clip right here, as well as the charging clip. You'll also find a couple manuals and paper things that you'll probably never use. The actual pod itself pops out of the band like this. Uh, there's my uh, shower from earlier today's workout. Wipe that off. All good. Uh, and then it pops into the charging clip so you can charge it up USB port as well as sync it up. Uh, this charging band is new though, and we'll talk about all the newness right now. Uh, first off, they've increased the number of hours of battery life from 8 hours to 20 hours, so pretty substantial hop, putting it more in line with some of the other options out there. Uh, for example, the uh, Skosh Rhythm Plus, the 2.0 edition, as well as the Skosh 24. They've also increased the range of it from 75 meters to 150 meters via Bluetooth. Now you may be wondering why you would want that much range. Uh, and this is primarily for team sport configurations, things where you have athletes on the field and you have coaches on the sidelines. Polar has an entire like team suite around that where they go and monitor vital stats from the sidelines. And so while 75 meters previously would have covered most all fields, I didn't necessarily do that very well. So 150 meters basically increases that range a bit more to be able to cover that field uh, kind of more resiliently. Uh, and the way they do that is super interesting. So if you look on the back with still my shower water there, um, you'll see there's this little metal strip right there that basically leverages the rest of this kind of pod strap holder as an antenna, as a signal booster effectively. Uh, and so once you pop this out and pop it in there, it goes ahead and uses this to boost the signal uh, quite a bit more. Now, but now you're probably wondering, can I take my old Polar OH1, stick it in there and boost the signal? You can stick it in there, but it won't boost the signal and it won't hurt the signal either, according to Polar. In fact, that's a great time to talk about the strap. It is new. If we look at the old OH1 Plus, uh, OH1 doesn't matter, they're both the same thing. Uh, one of the biggest complaints was that it would flip over. So you had it in your arm and it would flip over, especially under like long sleeve clothing and stuff. Uh, it just was easy to flip and then you wouldn't have heart rate readings anymore. This basically solves that by making it a much bigger platform. It's virtually impossible, I mean not impossible, almost impossible to flip this over. It's on par with any other optical heart rate sensor out there. The next change they made is to go ahead and increase the storage uh, from 12 megabytes, yes, megabytes, up to 16 megabytes. And while that might sound like a lot, the reality is that's 600 hours of storage on this device. You're gonna sync your device before then. Like if you didn't, why would you have bought this device? It doesn't really make much sense. Next, there's the increased water resistance from 30 meters up to 50 meters. That's more just of a spec thing than anything else. I don't know of anybody who's killed one of these things in the water. Now we got something for the geeks in the crowd, which is dual Bluetooth concurrent channels. On the old OH1, OH1 Plus series, you'd have one Bluetooth channels and unlimited AMP Plus channels. The problem was if you had a Polar Watch or a Sunto Watch or an Apple Watch that could only connect to Bluetooth smart sensors, you would use up that one connection. So if you had it paired up to your DreadX watch and then you wanted to do Zwift and pull the sensor from there, then you couldn't. So this solves that, that gives you two concurrent Bluetooth smart channels and still unlimited AMP plus channels. Going back to the strap for a second, you'll notice I've got it laid out like this. There we go, you can see both ends of it. That's awesome. This one is permanently sewn in a loop. Uh, so like today, when I went out for a run, cold temperatures, I put on my coat and I'm like, oh, I need to put on this. This way, you, with this one, you can kind of like slide it down your arm. It's not like graceful and it probably takes more time anyways, but you can do it because now it's just a simple sliding it through the clasp there like that. The strap is also machine washable as well. The next change here is that they've got a new swim clip, which is right here. So if we look at the Verity Sense swim clip right there, and then we have two different iterations of the Polar uh, OH1 swim clip right there, uh, you'll see that's a bit more changed. Polar says this has a more universal uh, swimming goggle compatibility sort of situation than the previous ones. I'll have to test that out when I can swim. Right now the pools were all closed, but they had the outdoor pools open, and then we got blizzarded this weekend, and so we can't test that functionality. What's that functionality, you ask? That's the new swimming features, because on the Verity Sense, you can now go for a swim workout, and it'll track indoor pool distance in total. So heart rate plus distance and time. It won't count strokes or anything like that. You take the sensor, you put it on your goggles, and it goes in and it counts all those metrics via configuration of the pool size with the smartphone app. 
So you just grab your smartphone app, set the pool size you want, and then you're off and running. It's basically just looking to flip churns or your open churns, whatever churns you are, and that accelerometer kind of difference there to figure that out. Speaking of accelerometers, while the OH1 and OH1 Plus have an accelerometer in it, the new Verity Sense also has a gyro and a magnometer. And those aren't really going to be used too much by you as an end consumer, but instead by third-party applications via the Polar SDK for not only this sensor, but other straps like the Polar H10 as well. Now, a feature that is used by you, though, is the lights on the back. So if we look at this pod right there, it's kind of hard to see, but there's these little uh, icons right there, a heart icon, a downloady looking icon with an arrow, and a swimming icon. Compared to the previous sensor, none of that existed. You had to simply know the color coding of the dotted light there as you went through the different modes. This now has three specific modes, one for transmitting, again, an AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart, one for downloading and saving the data onto the unit itself, and one for swimming that measures your pool swim. Now, I'm going to dive into all three of those modes in just a second. However, if you are finding this video useful or interesting or whatever the case may be, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, one last tidbit is the price has increased from $79 or 79 euros up to $89 or 89 euros, uh, so a $10 increase. Now, things that are not changing on this entire setup from the OH1 series is one the charging cradle and dock is exactly the same. It's got the same internal sensor design there uh, from an optical heart rate standpoint, which as we'll see in the testing, hopefully plays out into being the same great optical heart rate accuracy that we saw with the Polar OH1 Plus. Okay, so let's run through all of the three basic operations here for those swimming clips out of the way and the charging clip out of the way. The first one is the general broadcasting mode. So basically just like any other heart rate sensor heart rate strap. Uh, and first what we do is we turn it on. Uh, so you can see when I turn it on, it shows me the mode that's in, heart rate. I can tap this right now to go to downloading mode, and I can tap it again to go to swimming mode, and then back to heart rate mode, which means just again, using it as a heart rate strap of some sort. So once I've left it there, it blinks that that's confirmed, and now it lights up the rest of the optical heart rate sensors. I can now go to my watch, we'll choose the Polar Grid X right now, down into the settings to pair it up as a Bluetooth smart sensor, and the same would work as well. So pair and sync, sync of the device, there we go. And while that is doing that, I'll do going over here, pair the sense, yep. And I'll pair it over on AMP Plus as well. Down to sensors, add new, heart rate. And we should find the same sensor right there on AMP Plus. Now, of course, the Garmin watch can also do Bluetooth Smart as well. So it's probably gonna find both of those. Uh, and so there we go. It should be this one right here, uh, 21389. Uh, but I can also show Bluetooth sensors and it'll show me the two IDs. Now, in this case, I don't know which one is which. Uh, it hasn't resolved those IDs or not, but that's all right. I'm gonna choose this right there. And now we're off and running. Now, at this point, it'll broadcast, as you can see, it's connected on both of these concurrently. So if I go back out of the menus right here and just start an activity, so I'm putting my finger on the sensor in order for it to get a recognized heart rate. Uh, that way it actually broadcasts this over. And what we're looking for is this to turn blue, which means that it's gone ahead and it's found the sensor. There we go, blue. Uh, that means it's from the external sensor as opposed to the underside. You can see now it's turned off that sensor there as well. Uh, so it's as simple as this. Now in this case, we take this and we pop it into the band. So move this out of the way. Uh, it basically only goes one of two ways, this direction, or the other direction has because of the way these little buttons are. And we take this and simply slide it on our arm and go off and running. Now at this point though, it's not recording a session onto the Verity Sense itself. Uh, instead, it's only doing that to the device I'm using. So in this case, the Grid X or the 945 or Zwift or whatever app that I want. Again, just like a standard heart rate sensor. Now, I'm gonna shut this off though, and I'm gonna show you how recording mode works. So I'll power this off. In this case, you saw it just blink, it's, it's now off. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it back on again. And what we need to do this time though, is to tap to go and choose the mode we want. So in this case, I'm gonna choose this download mode. You see a little icon change to green there. I can say, nope, I wanna swim and goes to white or over here, blue uh, for the broadcast mode, but I wanna go to download mode. And what this does, once it confirms, it'll now start recording and saving to this device itself. Now, this is a bit different than something like the OH1 or OH1 Plus, where you actually double tapped whenever you wanted to start recording. You can't do that here. You have to decide up front. And once you've turned it on and made that decision, you can't change it. Uh, and so you see if I tap at any point in time, it shows me the green light indicating that it's in this downloadable mode. Versus if I tapped it when I was in the other mode, it would show me the blue for just broadcasting uh, and then the white for swimming. In this mode, it will still broadcast. In fact, you can see that right here, the blue there uh, broadcasting that in 98, you know, it's a fake heart rate right now, but it's still broadcasting something which tells you this is still working despite being in that downloading mode. 
Now, from a downloading standpoint, once you're done, you just power it off, uh, which saves activity, and then you power back on. At that point, it'll connect to your phone, or if you put it in the cradle on your computer, it'll go ahead and download the activity to Polar Flow, where it'll then sync to Strava or whatever other sites you wanted to. You can analyze it on Polar Flow, you can save it and do whatever you want to do with it there. It's just basically a heart rate file, though. Nothing special, no other like details, just just heart rate and time. So for the last mode, we've got the swimming mode. Again, you know the drill at this point, so power it on here, and we'll go to swimming mode this time. There we go. Boom, now it's in the white swimming mode. Uh, in this case, I've configured the pool size using the smartphone app. You can see it on one side of the screen right here. Uh, and then now it's swimming mode. I would take this out of this though, and I would put it in my uh, swimming uh, sensor strap right there. Strap sensor pod thing. And then attach this to my goggles, and then start swimming. Uh, and again, just like before, uh, once I'm done, I just go ahead and power this off and I'm good to go. And you will see it's still broadcasting this mode. You can see that right there, uh, broadcasting over to the grid app. That's notable because of the fact that this still works with the form swim goggles. So that's where you could connect this to the form swim goggles, the heads up display goggles, and go for swim getting a heart rate from this device. Once you're done with this, you can save it just like before by ending it. And then in Polar Flow, you'll see your distance for indoor swims only, not outdoor open water swims, as well as your time, uh, and then your heart rate. And that's as simple as that. That's all you need to know about the basics of this, except for accuracy. So for that, let's jump over to the computer and look at that. Okay, taking a look at this first Zwift workout right here, relatively tame overall compared against the Polar H10 chest strap, the Polar OH1 optical heart rate sensor, the Scotia Rhythm 2.0, and then the Whoop uh, sensor as well. And you'll see on the whole, it looks almost identical. In fact, the only differences are these sprints right here, where you see a little bit of lag. You see this kind of was three lines, three sets here. This first set is the Polar H10 chest strap with the Scotia Rhythm plus 2.0 being virtually identical. Then that middle line right there, uh, that is the two polar optical heart rate sensors, so the OH1 plus as well as the uh, Verity Sense. And then the bottom line right there is the whip uh, just being kind of late to the party. Uh, but we're still talking like three to five seconds of lag for the most part, so we're not talking a whole lot. Uh, and then the rest of the time it basically stabilized out again. We see the exact same thing here in this next sprint. Again, a little bit of lag from those two sensors uh, versus the H10 and even the Scotch optical heart rate sensor are pretty much spot on. Okay, now we've got an outdoor running workout. Uh, this one also throwing in the Apple Watch SE as well as the Garmin 4Runner 745 optical heart rate sensor. Uh, you'll see relatively close. Again, the whip is kind of missing most of this. Uh, we do see some errors though from the 4Runner 745. I think the first time in six months I've had some pretty substantial errors on this. And you see it in the third interval here down in pink and the fourth interval. What you don't see though is the Verity Sense because it's perfectly aligned to the Garmin HRM Pro chest strap, as well as the Polar H10 chest strap, as well as the Polar OH1 and the Apple Watch. Like, now, last but not least, we're going back indoors on a pretty intense uh, Peloton interval workout here. I start off with a relatively easy build. All the sensors are looking very, very close, a bit of lag and whatnot from the whip, but everything else is very, very close. Then I go into some Z3 intervals, the zone three intervals, uh, still not super crazy, but then back at the end here, this is where I dive into these 30 by 30 uh, sets where 30 seconds really hard, 30 cents recovery, and you'll see that the same pattern we saw earlier where the H10 and the Scotia were like spot on, uh, but a little bit of delay again from the Verity Sense and the Polar OH1 behind everything. And then this bottom like pinkish line, like very light purple line there, uh, that is the whip strap completely missing every single interval. So overall, outside of the slight lag that I see in the indoor cycling workouts, the running side is like spot on. It's really, really crispy. Right now, the roads are too icy for me to get out and do outdoor road cycling workouts, uh, where I sometimes see more variants from optical heart rate sensors, though usually not in the Polar H1, which I suspect will carry through to the Verity Sense as well. Okay, for those of that follow my testing over the years, you'll know that I often use the Polar OH1, OH1 Plus, as like one of my core reference devices for testing of lots of wearables and heart rate straps and sensors and all that kind of stuff. Because it's so accurate, it's probably, arguably, the most accurate optical heart rate sensor I've ever tested. It just works. Now, some of that is because of the fact that it's not on my wrist. It's up on my arm, which is a much easier place and position to test um, or to measure accuracy. So it'll probably come like my go-to, probably mostly because of the strap, uh, but also the battery life is kind of handy and then the dual Bluetooth connectivity as well uh, for me. Anyways, if you found this review interesting or useful, whatever the case is, simply whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. We got a couple of good weeks coming up for us, so you won't want to miss it. With that, have a good one.